Hey everybody, welcome to the Baby Lock Ovation Serger Manual. Today what I wanna do is cover page 25 in the manual. And that topic is actually a topic I maybe should have covered a little sooner. It's actually how to start surging a seam and how to chain off. And I'm sure some of you who are watching me have been working with your serger and you probably have already been surging for miles and miles. So I feel like I should have maybe gone you know, a little more out of order and done this sooner. So I apologize to anyone who's um, having trouble with that. Um, so what I wanna do is show you the proper way to start your very first seam after you thread your machine and then how to chain off. And then I'm gonna show you some tips with the presser foot. And also um, if you have a fabric that's not feeding underneath the foot properly. I have a tip for that as well. All right, so I just wanna show you my samples. I have a rayon matte jersey I'm gonna use. I have a very lightweight, you can see how thin it is, um, polyester knit. And then I also have some regular muslin that I'm gonna use. And that I think covers a wide range of different kinds of fabric that you may need to search. So, you know, the things that are stable are easy to get under the presser foot and easy to feed through. Um, but the things that are thin and shifty tend to be more challenging. So that's why I'm choosing these um, fabrics that are a little bit, you know, shifty and lightweight and hard to maybe get started. You can see here, I've threaded my machine and there's no chain started. Okay, so right after you thread your machine, and you're gonna start your first seam, it's really important to start with some fabric under the needles. Now, if you're working on a garment or any other project, you always wanna test your stitch to get yourself started anyway. So really, you should never be taking your, your project that you've cut out and get it started right away. Um, you always wanna do a test. So I've set my machine up for a four thread standard stitch. I have black thread so you can see the stitching. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just show you how to start out when you have no chain under here. When your presser foot is up, the tip of your presser foot cocks up really easily. See how it pivots really easily? So you can actually get that fabric right under there with no trouble at all. Now with the presser foot up, it will just slide in there as well. Okay, so either way, if you wanna pivot this up um, or if you just wanna slide it under, you could do that either way to get started. Then I'm gonna put my presser foot down. The reason why putting the presser foot down is super important is because when your presser foot is up, your tension discs are open and that's perfect for threading. You wanna have, have the tension discs open so the thread seats into those tension discs properly. So when you put the presser foot down, it clamps on the thread. So if you ever start surging and you forget to put your presser foot down, you're gonna end up with a nest of nasty looking thread because there's no tension on um, any of the, the thread. So presser foot goes down. I'm gonna hand walk um, by turning the, um, the wheel towards me a couple times just to get those needles in there. And then I'm gonna start surging. All right, so that's how you start surging. And I've stopped now because the next step is to chain off. Now to chain off, what you wanna do is sort of have your hand behind, um, you know, grab the, the fabric from behind and gently, you know, you're gently guiding it. Notice how my chain is not pulled tight. If you're guiding your fabric and you're pulling it really tight, and it's looking more like that, that means you're pulling the fabric out too hard. If you are pulling your fabric out so hard that you're distorting the nice lacy looking chain, which looks like this, then you are in danger of actually snapping something. By pulling tight on those threads, you can actually break a needle, you could knock your serger out of timing, you could do all sorts of damage. So as you're leading the fabric out from behind, just make sure you're leading it gently and your clue that you're doing that right is that you see this nice lacy looking chain. If it starts to look more like a gnarly rope, you're pulling too hard. 
All right, so once you've got um, a little bit of a tail, you can either use the cutter, which is right here. Okay, so I can actually just go like this and cut it. Um, or you can use your scissors. Okay, another thing that's tempting to do when you chain off is to actually run the chain back through and have the knife of the serger cut it. Um, that's not the best thing to do either because those threads can get caught up between the knife and the loopers and cause um, your machine to get jammed or you know you might break a needle. So I don't recommend doing that either. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute, what not to do. But I wanna point out, okay, um, we have this, you know, our first seam that we sewed on this um, muslin, and I just wanna check and make sure it's stitching properly. So I can see that, you know, my needle threads are running nice across the bottom, you know, the base of the stitch. If I look on the wrong side, um, the needle threads look nice and tight. And what you look for in a four thread stitch is that the looper threads are meeting at the cut edge. I know that this is kind of small, but you can see all right, the upper and lower loopers are meeting right at that cut edge. So that means it's nice and balanced and it's ready to go. So I'm happy with my stitch. I'm gonna stick it in there again. And this time I don't have to have the fabric under the needles. Once you've established your chain, you can just put your fabric at the, the front or the toe of your presser foot and start surging again. Now for stable fabrics, you don't even need to get the fabric under the presser foot with the ovation, it's amazing. Watch this. See how I can see the feed dogs? They are out so far in front of the needles that it makes feeding fabric into this serger so easy. So let me just show you that. Okay, so I've got it like this, right at the edge. I'm not lifting this up at all. I'm just gonna butt it up against the front and I've got it in the position where it's actually, the knife is actually gonna have to cut the fabric. Watch what happens when I start surging. See how it just took it? All right, let me show you what not to do when you're chaining off. That's okay, you can see I've got my nice lacy tail here. But then if I go like this and bring it back around, all right, you can see it will cut it. But the problem with doing it that way is all of the threads that are in this knife area could get caught and they could get caught under the presser foot, they could get caught between the knife and the, the, the needles. So really try not to do that. Okay, I know it's tempting. I'm gonna admit sometimes I do do it, but it's really just as easy to either use your scissors or use the built-in um, thread cutter that's right here. All right, so that's how you start surging and stop surging. I wanna show you um, on some other fabric. So let me get my uh, matte jersey out here. And let's just try it and see what happens. And I'm literally trying it with you. I don't know, you know, I'm assuming it's gonna work great. Let's just try it. And I'm gonna just put them in front of the foot. Okay, it did work really nicely. So this is pretty amazing. I didn't even adjust the differential feed and it's almost perfect. I can see where it's stretching it a little bit, so I probably would have to put my differential feed on a slightly higher or faster front feed dog setting to get a perfect stitch on this, but you could see it fed under there really nicely. I'm gonna put my differential feed on 1.3 now because I know that that's great for this blue knit. So this is feather light. This is the lightest of knits that I could find. And let's see what happens when I try to feed this under the presser foot. That also took very nicely. I'm gonna be going over each stitch 
Okay, and when I do that, I'm gonna go over how to start and stop on a cover hem. So if you're wondering about that, don't worry, I'm getting to that very quickly. And, um, you know, lots of other fun stuff too. If you have any questions or comments about how to start or how to stop or relax surging, you know, please post your comments below or you can visit my blog at Stern Designs. Okay, so I hope you're enjoying this series of videos. I just wanna take a minute and thank everybody who has post comments. I'm getting email questions, which I love. If you have questions, please feel free to send them along. Um, they will show up in the series of videos. I got another question about sewing cover hem and I will be getting to that. So please, you know, post your comments. You know, if you like the video, just click like because then I know I'm on the right track. Um, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you next time on the Baby Lock Ovation Searcher Manual.